and welcome to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. One of the trends in colouring that we see quite a lot of is people that cover up the line art in their colouring books to make the picture look a little bit more realistic and give it more of a sort of painterly feel. The main methods that people are using for this just now are usually something like a white gel pen or a Posca pen and I have tried both and I'm just not very happy about it and I can't seem to get the pencil to lay down on top of the paint or the you know whatever it is very very well so I've been doing a bit of experimenting and I wanted to show you what I have found today just messing about and trying out different things so we're going to go to top down view and have a look at another way to cover up line work. So what I have here is the Disney Dreams collection by Thomas Kincaid and one of the wonderful beautiful things about this book is that the original artwork is in the book and it's there as a reference image right beside the colouring page so basically this has been translated into line work for you to colour and it's one of these books that I just like to sit and look at <laughs> you know because the pictures are absolutely gorgeous. And one of the things that's really sort of led me to this point is the dissatisfaction I've had colouring these pages because they will never look anything like the original because these have all been painted and I do believe they're done in oil paint but as you can't replicate that and one of the things that makes it difficult is the fact that the line work is very very heavy in places and when you start to colour with your pencils that shows through. So I did have a go at the very first image and uh, I used a lot of gel pen here to try and hide some of the line work. Now, a prime example of that was through the clouds. And you can see quite clearly though where the gel pen is. And there's places where I've tried to go over it with pencil. And it depends on the paper, but it just doesn't seem to lay down well. Pencil doesn't seem to lay down too well on top of the, the gel pen. So I was just having a little think. I was trying to think outside the bubble a little bit and see if there was another thing that I could come up with or another way to try. And something that I have tried and come across is this, and it is white ink. Now, it is not completely opaque, uh, it, it, it's, it's ink, but what I have found is that if you use this on your line work, the first quality of it is that because it's ink, it soaks into the paper. Whereas with gel pens and the likes of your Posca pens, you know, your, your water-based paint pens, you're, you're putting a layer down on the paper, but it's actually sitting on top of the paper. So although you are getting that complete coverage and it is quite opaque, it's leaving bumps on the paper it's leaving texture on the paper and it makes it difficult to merge your pencil in with what's going on to the paper and what's going on on top of your your white gel pen with this I'm going to turn the page now and show you what I have been doing I have done this top corner here now you're never going to get rid of the lines completely if you do with the ink then you're back to the same scenario as you're in with your gel pen or your Posca pen because it starts to build up on itself and you, you end up, it's it, the pencil looks very different on top of the ink than it does on top of the paper. But you can see here that I have managed to soften out some of the lines and I wanted to show you just a bit more closely here as well if I just get uh, zoomed in a wee bit. On this sort of support, supporting beam, let's call it that, I have put different layers of the of the ink down, like numbers of layers down, just to show you. Now here is how the line work looked before it had any ink on it. So you can see straight away there is there is a difference, and it's almost sort of faded it out slightly. If you look up here, this is three layers of ink, so it's almost taken the line completely away. And these parts in the middle here, this is only one layer of ink. So the idea is that you do have to wait for it to dry between layers, but you can build it up in layers to get to the desired, um, you know, the desired coverage, if you like. And it's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but it's a nice alternative to using a gel pen or a Posca pen. Now there are, there are reasons why I've left certain parts. This edge along here is mostly dark in the reference image. It's got this lovely dark purple colour. So I'm not too bothered about having to cover up too much of it. Whereas some of these lines here are much, much lighter because the colour of the wood in the reference image is lighter. So those are the ones that I'm going to want to build up more layers on. So I just wanted to do a quick demonstration and while it's drying, I'm going to start colouring over the top of some of this just to let you see what's happening. 
So that was kind of my plan for today. As I say, I was, I was just really sort of having a little experiment and trying to, you know, sort of think of, a, of another workaround because I'm really not satisfied. And some people are great when they use the, um, you know, gel pens and things and you would never know it's there, but it just doesn't work for me. So I was looking for an alternative. So I've got a tiny little paintbrush here. I've got a nice little pointy brush there. And it's just a case of literally going over the lines. And it's quite important to make sure you haven't loaded your brush up too much because you will get that sort of splodgy, thick, gummy effect, which is what we don't want. So I'm going to go over here. And see, the beauty of this is it does, it does soak into the paper. So the texture of it tends to be much, much flatter. So there we go, I've, I've loaded some parts up and I've not loaded other parts up. And it's just to let you see the difference of, you know, what it's gonna look like. And as I say, once it's dry as well, it you know, it looks different again. With the smaller lines, uh, obviously you have to be a lot more careful. You have to take your time a, a wee bit more. But that is just something that comes with practice. And if you're used to using gel pens for stuff like this, you'll probably find this reasonably easy, I would imagine. It's good to get quite a stiff brush to do this as well because it gives you a lot more control in those sort of finer spaces. Now you can see I've gone over the castle in the background already and it's a lot paler. And if you look over here at the reference image, it's, it's kind of like a grey colour anyway. So again, one layer is enough. But I find it particularly helpful in the areas where the line work is really thick and heavy, like here. Now that in itself is a pain because if you look again over here, there is, isn't a hint of any dark, dark colour on these stones. So they are literally, you know, just lines that don't, don't need to be there and are going to affect the, the way that your picture looks. So it's just something that I thought would be fun to try. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll give that a waft <laughs> to try off. <laughs> now this ink's really easy to get a hold of. You can use any type of white ink. I like the Windsor Newton one because it's easy to get a hold of in the UK and it's very reasonably priced as well. Um, so yeah, that's one of my favourites. You can pick them up individually for, I think, four or five pounds, uh, or you can get them in a set. They come in different colours as well. So, and they've got these cute little drawings on them as well. Little polar bear for the white one. And they come in lovely little boxes as well that's also got the same design on it, if you like that kind of thing like me. <laughs> All right, so as I say, I've, this was done yesterday, so this is, this is long dry. But what I wanted to show you is how the colour is going to take over the top of the ink. So I'm going to start in here and you can see that this is very, very dark and it's this sort of lovely purpley colour. So obviously going over white ink, that's somewhere where potentially that might be a, you know, a bone of contention if the, if the colour going down on the paper isn't going to match up to the colour going down on top of your, your white ink. But straight away there you can see, and I'm just doing my usual, for any of you that have been watching this channel for a while and watch me colour, you know that I, I usually just chuck down a really light layer of whatever my, my base colour is just to sort of get myself going. And that's exactly what I'm doing there. And you can see straight away, obviously when I have covered over the black line work with my ink, I've not got it absolutely bang on and if I zoom in a wee bit you'll be able to see that I've gone over the sides quite a lot so the the you know the ink has gone into these spaces here so I am I'm putting pencil directly down on top of the ink and you can see there that it's not that different to working on the actual paper and I, I see I think it's because of the absorbency I think it's because it's actually soaking into the paper rather than sitting on top now I don't know that for a fact I'm just making that you know it's like a, a logical conclusion kind of thing it kind of makes sense so there you go that is a really simple method to try and cover up some of your line work if you're looking for absolute white out I would probably stick with the Posca method or the, the gel pen method but I'm much happier with this because I seem to be able to work better over the top of it. So anyway, we'll crack on and we shall colour in this, just this wooden beam and it'll let you see the finish effect and how I, you know, how I'm doing it step by step with, you know, with each of my pencils as well. So we've got a bit of a shadow here as well. I'll try and put this in. Now it's, it's quite interesting because the, there's a lot of things missing. If you look very carefully at these images that in the Thomas Kincaid book, there are, when they've done the line work, I think they've tried to sort of simplify the paintings a little bit just to make it a wee bit easier on themselves for actually translating it into that line work because 
a prime example, I'll just show you straight away, there's this sort of vine and little sort of leaves coming up here and it's just completely missing from here. I'm going to draw them in uh, probably in gel pen actually and get that sitting down over the top. You can see I've used a little bit of gel pen, pen here for things like that, which I don't mind using it for touches, but it's just something that doesn't seem to work for me in the, the sort of, you know, for, for the bigger picture as it were. Get some of this down. Doc's looking like a happy chap there. But again, I'm not so concerned of these kind of creases and things in here. I'm not so concerned about them because they're quite dark anyway, but you can see I've just gone straight over the top of that there. Uh, and that does have ink on it. That was just one layer of ink. And that's just, it just goes down. It just behaves almost like the paper. You are going to get a slight discoloration, but it's not much. And the more layers of ink that you have down, the stronger that discoloration is going to become. So that is something to bear in mind when you are, you know, when you're actually going to lay it down if it's something that you want to try. But I'm really happy with this over here. It looks much, much better than it did. See, it's quite, I mean, these are so, so beautiful and there's, if you're just working in pencil, there is not much you're going to be able to do to make it look like the, you know, like Thomas Kincaid's original work, so. But if you can get a sort of step closer to it, which was kind of my idea with this, then, you know, it's a bit more satisfactory. Do you know what's really funny when I'm doing this? See, instead of looking at the reference image here, like, which is right beside my hand, I'm actually looking at the monitor up here. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if anybody else has this book and feels the same as me, but I think I'm really not, I really don't like the paper in this book. It's not really ideal for coloured pencil. I've tried Prismacolors in them and I've tried, well, these are polychromos I'm using just now, but they just, it, the paper doesn't seem to want to take a lot of layers, which is slightly disappointing. I love the colours in this this particular image though because it is quite bright and colourful and it's quite nice. <laughs> it's a happy image. So I don't really have anything exciting to talk about. I'm kind of all chatted out just now. It is Pip's birthday tomorrow. Um, she <laughs> she has survived to a year old in our house, uh, which is, is good considering I could quite easily have choked her on several occasions over the last sort of 10 months. <laughs> but uh, that's her, she's, she's getting to be quite a big girl now. She's almost an adult. And uh, she's still very endearing, obviously. And she's still a complete pest a lot of the time, obviously. <laughs> but she's uh, she's turning into a nice, a nice good little girl. So that's always something. So we're not we're not having a party for her, right? <laughs> oh dear me! Right, okay. For the, for this wooden part, I'm kind of going with the the same colours here, and I built up quite a few different colours. So oddly, the first colour that I was using was uh, cinnamon. So it's kind of popping like a layer of that down, and I need to decide where to bring it to about here. I should really do this. You can just see that reference image no more. I can't really do anything about the fact that I'm left-handed and I'm I'm covering it up, but I'm I'm terribly sorry about that. <laughs> I am trying to go really lightly, as I say. I don't. I'm not really overly enamoured with the way that pencil goes down on this paper anyway but there are there's a section that I've covered with white ink again and the pencil's just gliding down over the top as if it's not there which is uh, it seems to be what happens when you when you're using just like maybe one layer of ink now I'm just going back up here this is dry now so you can see the difference the direct comparison between this side and this side so it is dulling down the lines quite considerably and for me a lot of the time that's satisfactory because by the time you do put coloured pencil down it's going to be very very faint a bit like these ones here you know you can hardly see them they're not like sticking out like a sore thumb but let's just keep going I'm going to put some more on I'm going to make this really thick up here just to see how much it's actually going to take to get rid of it the line I mean obviously I'm not explaining myself I'm having one of those days today where I'm not explaining myself very concisely so I apologise for that I'm just having one of those days I think I tried to ask my husband something earlier and it just like the whole sentence just came out in a jumble <laughs> and I was like spat my words out start again and he's like yes can I have that in English please I was like, I'm trying <laughs> I have no excuses either I'm not I'm not overly tired or anything like that I'm just just having one of those days today I <laughs> Okay, so that's quite thick. So I'm going to put a thinner layer on the, the line underneath. And if you're not very confident 
with a you know with a paintbrush like this and I can understand you know sometimes you maybe don't have the steady to steadiest of hands and that happens to me a lot um just with the, the old hand injury I've got I've got a lot of nerve damage in my hand and a great way to practice is to take a like a magazine or a newspaper would be better if you're using this ink and just try and you know cover some of the lines up it's great practice make it funny looks from anybody else in your household right now i've seen what you're doing what are you doing painting over the newspaper but it's it's a good way to practice and it's re relatively cheap without sort of ruining any coloring books while you're doing it or alternatively you can just take a black fine liner or a black biro and scribble some shapes and things on a piece of blank paper you can do it that way it's always worth a shout right okay i'm going to go back up here now and i'm going to pop in some of this purple i am trying to follow the reference image as much as i can there's this great big dark bit here so you go just as i said a light layer creature of habit and I can blend in some of this cinnamon up here. Again, it's very difficult. Obviously, Mr. Kincaid is a very talented artist, a very, very talented artist. And he used to mix paint a lot, as you do when you're painting anything. And it can be quite difficult to sort of replicate some of the colours. Um, you know, just to judge what's, what, what he's actually used or maybe what colours he's mixed together. But I, I don't agonise over it too much because, again, it's back to this. I know this is never going to be a carbon copy of, of what he's done, but it is, it is fun to try. But it's just not to get too, too hung up on it, really. Now, these nooks and crannies are purple as well, which is interesting. So, again, I'm straight over the ink here. And I'm not going to be building this up in layers. I'm pressing quite hard. But there's no, you know, there's nothing odd about that and there's nothing you wouldn't look at that and say oh she, she's clearly colored over the you know over the top of something it just looks like I've, I've put pencil down on paper and I think that is the key to this um you know that's kind of what we're, we're going for when we're wanting to block out the lines so I can just start building up the color now but you do have to be very careful with this paper because it's just it's just not that great to be Okay, so we've got a bit of an orange shadow as well. I want to pop some of that in. So this, this is the colours that I was using over here because obviously it's the same reflection from, from Doc's lamp. So where I've put the orange down there, that line has more or less disappeared. You, mean, you can hardly see it. So that to me is, is a satisfactory indication that this is a, a feasible method to use for, you know, for the... For for the effect that I'm wanting. Some people wouldn't be happy with this and they would want everything to be completely covered up. And if that's the case, this is not not the method for you. I can I can say that with a, with a degree of certainty. Yeah, the colors seem to muddy up quite quickly. Now for these little yellow highlights, you can just see them here and these ones here, I'm gonna use a, a yellow gel pen for that. I did try with an ivory pencil up here, but I wasn't really happy. It's not like popping out enough. So I've decided just to go with the, the coloured pencils and we can, you know, worry about that. <laughs> worry about the highlights later. So currently it is Saturday and my mum is here to stay. Mama Gem is in the house. She is, I have a very special treat for her. There is actually a reason for her being here today. Uh, well, this weekend. She is, um, for her, <laughs> so that's kind of a long and involved story back a bit. My my mum is in her late 60s and she has a bucket list and one of the things that was on her bucket list was going up in a hot air balloon. So for her birthday this year, which was uh, back at the beginning of the summer, I bought her a trip up in a hot air balloon. Thinking to myself that Papa Jem would go with her and it transpires that Papa Jem has absolutely no interest in going. <laughs> so it's ended up that I'm going with her. So that's it. That's going to be fun, but she's really excited about it. So we thought she would come up and just, you know, make a weekend of it. So that's going to be, that's going to be good fun. I just hope the weather's good enough for us. Apparently they give you like a three day window, you know, for the weather. So if they will phone you the day before and if you, if they're not flying or whatever, they'll message you and say, no, not today. So they give you like three days to, you know, to see if the weather's going to clear up, which in Scotland is probably just as well <laughs> Our weather is so, so, so changeable. So I'm actually quite looking forward to that. It's it's not something that I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to go, obviously, but it's not, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it'll be a good experience because I've never, I've never been up in a hot air balloon. 
but I'm just not sure how excited I'm going to be about it or how much I want to appreciate it you know like I really do want to appreciate it and I'm sure I will but it's just um yeah it's just something that I would never have really I don't really how do I explain it I just it's not something I've hankered to do for my entire life how's that So that was the Amazon man, Amazon package. And inside here are our gouache paints for our coffee funded video. I'm not even gonna show you them because I want it to be a surprise, but that's them arrived, so that's great. I don't know when I'm gonna squeeze in film in this video, but <laughs> we'll worry about that later. Okay, let's get some serious purple down here. I need to start building up some of this orange color as well. And I'm going to put a tiny little black bit of black over this. I did try um, on a separate piece of paper. I tried with a sort of dark grey colour. I tried with Payne's grey. And it really wasn't doing anything over the purple. So I would I very rarely use black for things like this. Because you end up with that sort of muddy, horrible colour. But it's working with the limitations of what I've got. So actually where this dark colour is, this is a really good example of what happens when after you've put the white ink down bear in mind that i put white ink all the way down here and you would never know that that that's been the case so i'm quite satisfied actually i say it's not perfect but it's another option as well especially if you don't have a you know if you don't like it because a lot of people have said that they're just not that keen on the idea um so i don't think it's it's just me if you if you are of the same mind and you kind of feel the same way i do about it please let me know in the comments because uh, I just wonder if it's just me sometimes. I don't know, I just feel like I'm never satisfied with the gel pen. It's uh, the person that does it best, and if you don't haven't watched any of her videos, please go and do it, it's Chris Cheng. She's absolutely amazing. And she uses gel pen and then uses Prismacolors over the top. And I swear blind, you would never know that she's put any gel pen down. I have no idea how she does it. I know she uses like a very, very light hand in lots and lots of layers. And she uses about a bajillion different colours, um, you know, just on one little thing. Um, and I quite often say that if I, like, maybe if I'm doing like a, a leaf or something, I've ended up using seven or eight different pencils. I always say that I've Chris Chenged it. <laughs> But she's she's very talented. But you would never know that she's that she's used any gel pen at all. It's fascinating, and I think I think I saw her do it. It was Ivy and Ninky Butterfly. I saw her do it, and and I don't know whether it's to do with the paper because the paper in that book is really really smooth. I know there is a difference between the US and the UK version, um, but it was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I was impressed. <laughs> now I just want to soften these wooden you know the sort of the dinkles the dinkles out you know the dents in the wood and the cracks because they look very stark and they're just a bit too harsh for my liking as we get down here it's not too bad well, i'm just going to pop a little bit of black up here right if i just move that over now it's really nice to have a reference image like this when i'm coloring i very very rarely use a reference image um, well, most of us don't, to be fair. We know we don't copy someone else's colouring, but this, it's actually quite a refreshing way to colour. And I find it, I find it quite good. I quite like it. Having just something to go by is nice for a little change. Okay, what do we think to that? I think that this could be a lot darker, but the page isn't going to take much more pencil. And this is, um, it's Delft blue that I'm using, which is actually more of a purple than a blue. But that's the sort of darkest purpley colour I've got without going into like indigo. And I feel as if I put some indigo down on top of it, it's just going to muddy up between the black and the purple. And it's ugh. so I'm just going to leave that as is. So there you go. You can see there now the, the comparison between this side to this side. You can only see a tiny little bit of this line. It is very, very faint. Now, bearing in mind that these lines were this dark before we started. So that's kind of the that, that's kind of where I've got to with this. So you can let me know what you think. If we just go back up here, you can see now that there's parts of this that are completely disappearing. And it's a case of just how how many layers and how thick I've put the, the ink down. On the reference image, this is all a really dark purple along here. So again, it's not that much of a problem. But this section here, the wood is very, very light and you're going into a light sky as well. So it would be in my interest to cover this up as much as possible. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to use a pale colour to show you what it looks like with a pale colour over the top of, you know, heavy, heavy layers of ink. And again, that's just to give you a really good idea of what to expect if you're going to, 
or if you're considering buying some white ink to try this out. So I'm really slapping this on. Now you will see a slight discoloration like you do with the gel pens and the Posca pens. You, when you go over it with pencil, there will be a slight color difference. It's not as stark as it is with the, the aforementioned though. So I'm just gonna jump off and let this dry and we'll, I'll come and cut back in once it's set. Uh, once it's all dried in and we can have another little go. All right, so we're back and everything is dry now and you can see that this line has faded out to almost nothing. I have left a tiny bit of it and it's just so that I can see where I'm colouring. Obviously, if you take the line away completely, it's really difficult to gauge where you're actually supposed to be putting your colour pencil down. So uh, yeah, we don't want any of that. In this section, this section here, I'm using really pale pencils. So I'm starting with uh, ivory and we are going to see how this goes. Now again, this is another part where the, it hasn't translated to the line work because there are lots of little lines and cracks and no texture on this section, and this is just a blank space. So we get to use a bit of artistic license here, which I always like. So I'm just gonna put a layer of my ivory down first and we can see how this goes. Just as an aside, I said the gouache just arrived earlier and uh, I, I use white gouache for my drawings and my watercolours to put highlights on. It's a bit like the painter equivalent of using a white gel pen in a colouring book. And just out of interest, I've squished a bit down here on top of the edge of this railway track and you can see the line underneath it, but I just want to see how the pencil behaves on top of it once it's dry. So that's a little aside experiment that we can look at at the end. Anyway, meanwhile, back in the back cave. <laughs> Let's get this pencil down. Now, the good thing about this is, although the ink, I nearly said oil, goodness me, although the ink is very thick here, we the colour of pencil that we're using is almost identical to the, to the ink because the ink does sort of yellow compared to the, the paper. So that might just be quite good. It might blend in quite nicely. Right, so we've got that layer down. Now, let's see what we have here. White yellow ochre. Right, now if I just zoom in here, you can see the transition. Do you see where the ink has held on to the pencil a little bit more than the paper has? But if you, you can build it up on the paper to match that up, you just have to press a little bit harder, put another couple of extra layers on, and then you can, you know, you can work between the two areas like that. So it is there, you can just see it very, very faintly, just along there, just to know more. But it is, it is minimal, it really is. And I think that's why I find this perhaps a little bit more satisfying than the other methods that you can use to, to cover up some, some colouring book line work. Right, I need a sort of light brown colour. Okay, let's try some Bistra. Perfect, that's exactly what I was looking for. Back over with my ivory now. Just gonna, just gonna kind of blend some of this together so it doesn't look as bitty. I have got here um, a light grey fine liner and uh, it's a 0 0.5 line width. And I'm just gonna use that to put in some of the detail. Again, if I sort of switch you over here, see all these little kind of marks and things. I don't want them to stand out terribly, but I want to be able to, you know, to, for people to see them because you need to know that this still wants to look like wood in its own little way. Again, I mean, this doesn't have to be exact. Any sort of texture that you put in here is going to look like wood. And then I want to have this in here because this is quite dark in here. There we are. So the only part that's really standing out on the ink is this part down here and it's not the end of the world. <laughs> it's really not. There we go. So I don't know about you guys, I would really appreciate your opinion on this, but that to me is great considering how thick and horrible the lines were before. Absolutely perfect, not too much work. And once you obviously do everything round about it, it's going to look even better. It's going to take me a long time to finish this picture for obvious reasons. When I am finished, I will post it. I usually post all of my artwork on Instagram anyway, but I will also post this on the community page in case you are not on Instagram and you'll be able to see the finished article once I've done. I will be chipping away at it over the next kind of month or so, so don't expect it imminently. But I promise you as soon as it's done, I will post it up and you can see what the finished result looks like and that might help you decide if you it's something that you would like to try for yourself. Right, just going down to this little gouache corner here. <laughs> 
wash corner. The the base colour here is kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of like a grey brownie colour. So I'm just going to get my swatch book out and see if I can match this up and just see if we can do anything over the top of this squash because it's right in the corner of the paper i'm not really too bothered if it doesn't but it's definitely worth a shout for sure so let's see what we've got a uh, nougat i'm actually thinking warm gray three but warm gray three I've, the the paper in my sketchbook is quite yellow compared to this so i'm thinking that it's probably not going to be ideal this is i really want a like the a french grey prisma for this but my prisma colors are elsewhere today so that's a problem right i'm gonna go nougat or nugget nougat so just as a comparison there we go that is on the the paper i am pressing really really lightly and the texture of the paint is killing it <laughs> I kind of thought it might. It's back to the same situation because the medium is sitting on top of the paper rather than being soaked in. Can you see how grainy that is? And that this paper does have a little bit of tooth to it and that's, you know, that's considerable. So that's maybe not the best option for what we're looking for. I'm just going to join this up. Yeah, it's changed the colour of the pencil as well. And I don't, th I, to be fair, because of the, the, you know, the, it makes it toothy, it makes it grainy, it's like watercolour ground. You could probably get some pretty, pretty funky layers down on top of this. Because it should pick up the, you know, it should, yeah, it's snatching up the pencil. Oh, that might be another, <laughs> another option. It's, it's crossing the divide though between where the paint stops and the paper starts. That's not too bad. I think we've just uh, automatically invented ourselves another video. What do you reckon guys? Once again, let me know in the comments if you want me to explore this further. I think uh, I would be happy to do so and just see if it's actually uh, worthwhile. Okay, let's have a zoom out again. All right, guys, anyway, that is uh, my little experiment for today. I just thought I would uh, sort of brain fart that out for you and see what you guys think of it as well. Please, please, please leave me a comment and uh, any input is much appreciated and you know I always welcome your comments anyway. And I want to thank you for coming and hanging out with me for the half hour or so that this video was taken. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we shall see you soon back in the cave for another video. Have a good day, everyone, and we'll speak to you later. Bye for now.